Before I start this video, I want to recommend my viewers to enable closed captions because I have been told that I can sometimes be incredibly sluggish and unclear while speaking. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Normally, when I make a mapping video, I make a list of all the sources I used and call it a day. However, while something like the 1929 Afghan Civil War can be researched with a single book and maybe some supplementary material here and there, researching the liberation of the Netherlands from 1944 to 1945 was more complicated. So, instead of providing a simple source list, I am going to describe how I made the video with another video. And this will serve two purposes. Firstly, explaining the research, and secondly, explaining why I haven't made any mapping videos since November 2022, on 6 June 2022. I had just spent two years working on World War I, and I just felt completely done. I considered, make I considered making some other projects about the Anglo-Yemeni War, or a month-by-month -month world map with no original research. But after a few weeks, I just felt I didn't have the energy or motivation anymore and called it quit. I had been video mapping for five years and I wanted to do other things with my life. I still wanted to work on Yemeni civil war videos. I had updated that conflict twice a year since November 2018. But when trying to update that video in September 2022, I also lost the energy for that. And after passing the torch to Borsk, I finally felt comfortable to call it quits. Some of you may remember when I uploaded a video announcing my retirement on 1 October 2022. After that video came out, I began bleeding subscribers and feeling unsure if I had made the right decision. It seemed like I was burning a bridge. Then, on 7 October, I stumbled upon the English Wikipedia page for the musket wars in New Zealand. There was this chieftain, Hongi Hika, and he was conquering other chieftains in New Zealand. This blew my mind, that there were warlords in New Zealand with fluctuating territories who tried to conquer each other. I had never seen these conflicts depicted on a map. So, in my newfound curiosity, I decided that I will try to map out the history of New Zealand. I then unlisted my video announcing my retirement. So I tried to figure out how I would go about doing this. I decided to map New Zealand piecemeal. First one small territory, then another. And I decided to start out by mapping out the history of the Chatham Islands. That video was finished on 26 November. And I re-uploaded it on 28th to fix some mistakes. After I finished doing that, my next project was to map the history of the Coromandel Peninsula. And you know, researching this whole field, the politics of pre-colonial New Zealand, was incredibly nail-biting and frustrating. I had to work with shit like CSA 1460, CSA 1430, or seven generations later. And what's six generations in the one polity can be seven in another. And sometimes two authors disagree on the chronological placement of an event in oral history by multiple decades. There was a time where I read that a chieftain was conquered at one point, and then I noted that down, but then weeks later I found another meta-analysis of oral history, and it says, um, actually, this policy survived for several more centuries. It was also frustrating. It made me want to pull my hair out. I did finish most of the research for the Coromandel video and even began mapping it, but I didn't edit it after 21 January 2023, and once again I lost interest. Over the next week, every time I tried to get to myself to work and was on the verge of starting, I thought to myself, no, literally anything else, and I will physically exercise or take walks instead. In February 2023, I found a new hobby, or more specifically, rediscovered an old one. Genealogy, the study of family trees. Back in 2018, I had worked a lot of my family tree on Ancestry.com, 
and now I will again scour through records and interview family members. This year, through interviews with my grandparents, I've managed to get a much better picture of what my great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents were like. Also back in 2018, my grandmother had given me a book about my Austrian great-grand-uncle Hans. And although most of my ancestors were Dutch, I have a deceased Austrian great-grandmother, and her brother Hans fought for Germany on the Eastern Front during World War II. On 1 March 2023, I finally decided to take a very deep dive into this book. I was, however, in no rush to read it fast. I slowly pushed forward, reading a few pages every now and then. I also spent time on other things, going on walks, interviewing family members in my family history, watching documentaries to get back into my Roman history hobby, and playing Roman Talks of War Barbarian Invasion. In May 2023, I even took a vacation to Hadrianswell. Now, there's a funny story about that, actually. There's this Roman history server with an off-topic channel called Beyond Hadrian's Wall, and I decided to do this. I am behind Hadrian's Wall. And now I'm beyond Hadrian's Wall. Do I win the channel? On 9 June 2023, I finally finished reading the book about my great aunt, grand uncle Hans. He had been born in Vienna, and although he immigrated to the Netherlands in 1926, he had not obtained Dutch citizenship by the time Germany invaded the Netherlands in 1940. Since he had legally been a German citizen since the Anschluss in 1938, he was conscripted into the Wehrmacht. The story ends when he dies in a skirmish with Soviet troops in, in June 1942 near Demiansk. And my great grandmother and her children living in the Netherlands find out about her loss in October 1942. The last event in the book takes place in July 1943, when my great grandmother receives a death letter from a former sister in law, hence his widowed wife, who will soon find another husband. That was fine and all, but the book left me itching for more. Shouldn't there be a whole saga from 1944 to 1945 when the Allies liberated the Netherlands from the German occupation? Simply ending with my great grandmother in July 1943 in the Netherlands is, in my view, a great cliffhanger. And thus, I decided I will research the liberation of the Netherlands from 1944 to 1945. I hadn't really met anything since January, almost half a year, but now I felt a desire to return to video map. I had long been aware of this Dutch Wikipedia page titled Chronologisch Overzicht van de Bevrijding van Nederlandse Plaatsen in de Tweede Wereldoorlog, which has a lot of information about the dates of the settlements are liberated, providing a great starting point. And thus, on 13 June 2023, four days after I finished reading the book about Hans, I will get to work. I opened Google My Maps and made a new project titled Liberation of the Netherlands. Very swiftly, I will notice problems with the data set on the Dutch Wikipedia. Some areas, especially Limburg, were very detailed, while others, like Zealand or the West, not so much. So, let's say that I want to figure out the exact places that the Allies entered Zealand in 1944 and how fast they advanced. The solution was to Google it. For example, I will Google Befreiding von Kuwacht and found out when the village of Kuwacht was liberated. Sometimes I will use quotes or years to try and improve the results. Then I will take that URL, bring it to the page Chronologisch Overzicht von Befreiding von Nederlandse Platz in the Tweede Wereldoorlog and make it more detailed. And like that, hamlet by hamlet, village by village, City by city, I found the data I was looking for. Keep coming back to the page, keep googling, and keep filling in the information. And now, back to that Google My Maps project. On 13 June 2023, I began adding locations listed on the Dutch Wikipedia list. When I noticed that some of the areas didn't have as much information as they should, I would Google settlements in those areas to improve the Dutch Wikipedia list. Then, after adding that information to the Dutch Wikipedia list, I will go back to Google My Maps and add all the information up to a certain date. On 15 June, I had added all settlements that have been liberated by 12 October 2000. 
On 15 June, I had added all settlements that were liberated by 12 October 1944, and I was continue making progress, chronologically moving forward and adding more corrections to the Dutch Wikipedia page as I went. And over the next week, I worked on it more and more. On 20 June, I discovered that the British had liberated a Dutch village called America, and then I had a funny idea. In my impulse, I made a video titled Ho oh, the British Successfully Conquered China and America Real History with, with all caps, title, and fucking Vojax in the thumbnail. In July, I slacked off it. And then on 2 August, I got back to work and pushed it up to 12 April 1945. And the next day, on 3 August, while continuing my research, I found this article titled Of welke dag is Steenwijk bevrijd? On which day was Steenwijk liberated? The article contains the following paragraph. The general staff of the Ministry of War published an investigation among all Dutch municipalities. Mayor Guman Borgesius of Steenwijk completed the survey in response to the question on which date does your municipality consider as the official date of the liberation? He answered April 12, 1945. So this changed my entire project. The government had done a survey of the dates in which municipalities were liberated, and all this time I had no idea. Of course, I couldn't just let this golden goose of information slip away. I googled Generale stuff from the Ministry of the Oral. And although I quickly found that the Dutch National Archive had a material about that institution, I could not find an online copy of the survey I was looking for. However, I was unfettered and sent an email to the Dutch National Archive to help me find the data I was looking for. In this article, I read. Two years later, the, the general staff of the Ministry of War published an investigation among all Dutch municipalities. For Steenwijk, Mayor Guman Burgoysius completed this survey. In response to the question, which date does your municipality consider as the official date of the liberation, he answered April 12, 1945. Where can I find all the answers and all the dates? The next day, I got a response. What an interesting question. Based on your message. I found my way to the archives of the general staff, slash staff of the commander of the army, 2.13.196. In my search, I came across inventory number 3045, to my surprise. See, https double colon slash www.nationalarchive.nl slash onderzoeken slash archive slash 2.13.196. Under slash invr slash procent veertig p tilde p punt een tilde p punt een punt twee tilde drie duizend vijf veertig. Whether the archival document indeed contains only the letter issued by the general staff and not the responses, as the archive description suggests, might be worth investigating for you. That didn't answer my question about how I was supposed to obtain the document, but after a few days of experimenting more, I found that if I made an account, I could place a reservation by filling in a form. And thus, on 6 August 2023, I placed a reservation to visit the National Archives in The Hague to be done on Tuesday the 8th. The 8th came, of course, very quickly. That morning, I purchased a few apples to take with me on the hour-long journey and took a bus to the nearest train station. Then I took the train to The Hague. Okay, funny anecdote, kind of off-topic, but I want to talk about this. When I took the train ride to The Hague, I saw a person who was playing on his Nintendo 3DS. I was amazed at this very rare sight, because mobile gaming has driven the 3DS to nigh extinction in the late 2010s, and then his 3DS isn't installed in stores anymore. And in my curiosity, I tried to peek at the screen to see what he was playing, but I couldn't get a good view. And then I asked him what he was playing, and he said, Pokemon! And then I showed his screen, and I catched a glimpse of him playing Pokemon Red and Blue on his console. 
I myself had dusted off my own 3DS back in April because I wanted to play Fire Emblem Awakening again. And I was playing it very regularly by 6th August, but I didn't think to bring it with my on the way my way back to the Hague. Instead I was play, browsing Discord and WhatsApp on my phone and enjoying the good hit people from the Hindu. I really regret that I didn't bring it with me because if I did, I could have had my first street pass interaction since twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen and I'll clear to to clarify, Street Pass is a feature of the where the Nintendo 3DS users can exchange game data and me is called and the device is coming close proximity. We were on the verge of greatness. We were this close. When I arrived at The Hague, I had no idea what to expect. I just made my way to the National Archive and hoped for the best. I entered the door and saw a lady behind the counter. And I asked her where my item was. She then said that she didn't know, and I had to ask another person, so she pointed me to the guy I needed to ask. And then I asked him for my item, and he asked me if I had visited the National Archives before, and I said no. So he asked my birth date and name, and then he took a picture of me and gave me my ID card for when I visited the National Archives in the future. I then asked if I could see my item, and he told me that I could ask for it in the library, but I couldn't take my bag with me because of security concerns. They didn't want people to put items in their bag and slip them out of the archive. I told him that I had only taken my bag with me to, put, to bring along food and my public transportation card, and the man asked. The man told me that I could store my bag in the locker room. So that's what I did. And with that done, I could enter the library. There are some adults, some really old people, I think in their 60s or 80s. An employee told me that it was relatively quiet today. I then went to the counter and the third one I had gone to the spa and asked the employee for the item I was looking for. Number 3045. And she told me it was come to me soon. Other employees left to pick one up from the stock room. And then some of the longest minutes of my life went by as I sat on the table throbbing with excitement. And then it came! The document was delivered! I had done it! I had traveled to another city and went to an archive in order to research a mapping video! And it was finally delivered! In my newfound elation at my success, I took a picture of the document and my identity card together with my phone and posted it and the WhatsApp groups of my paternal and maternal family. Someone on my paternal family's WhatsApp group asked me if I was researching more of my family tree since I had already posted about my genealogy research a few times. But no! I said it was part of my research to map out the liberation of the Netherlands from 1944 to 1945, because I hadn't actually posted about that on the group before. I proceeded to take pictures of every single page, and when I was done with that, I returned the documents to the counter, and I then examined the pictures with my phone and noticed that some provinces like Utrecht seemed to lack data on specific settlements. The document said the entire province was liberated on 5 May 1945. Objection! Now, first of all, German surrender does not equal immediate liberation. The Allies had to move into the occupied areas first in order to take over the administration. The people of Rotterdam learned that painfully when they prematurely celebrated the surrender and were shot by a German occupying throne. And second of all, it said the province of Frisia was liberated in a single day on 15 April 1945. 
Uh, that, was, that was just a completely unscripted. That seems wrong. It took place over multiple days and other provinces have granular settlement by settlement information. I felt like I might have missed some pages while taking pictures. Therefore, I asked the woman behind the counter if I could have the same item again. She acquiesced, and the person delivering the item back to its location was asked to bring it a second time. That, and that happened. So, I spent a few minutes grazing the document further with my eyes, comparing them to the pictures on my phone before delivering it again. And I said, Nu ben ik echt klaar, which means, now I am truly done. Then I left the library, picked up my bag, and returned to the entrance. I had to wait a few more hours before the train would arrive, so with which I could return home. To pass the time, I ate all my remaining apples and played three chess games on my phone. I lost the first one and won the second and third. And then I made my way home, and with the documents in my possession, the the project will resume. I first considered trying to add all the archive items to the Dutch Wikipedia list, but I quickly realized that the list had serious problems, even ignoring that it equates Serena to liberation, that it misses the data for entire provinces. Lots of data given here is simply false. For example, it says that Alakak was liberated on 5 April 1944. Almost half a year before the Allies entered the Netherlands on 12 September 1944. Did the Dutch resistance just liberate a town of their own accord with no Allied support? And to top it all off, the incredible feat that was completely unrecorded on the internet, which is unusual given that much smaller resistance actions have gotten much more attention! So I concluded that it was much more likely that, that it was simply some clumsy bureaucrats, and because of this, a lot of poor quality information made its way into this stock. So, here's how I decided to go about this. I made a sandbox page on the Dutch Wikipedia, created a table with the visual editor, and then copied every entry from the images on my phone onto the table. I could then use the store stable function to sort every entry chronologically. I then created an apocrypha category for settlements on my Google My Maps project. Well, the galaxies from the Dutch Wikipedia list are meaningless or colored according to the date of liberation. These were all colored blue. That way, when I got around to animating the map, I could tell what data is or isn't from a poor quality archive. If information from the archive fit the rest of the information I gathered, I will show it in the video. But if the archive data indicated that the village was surrounded for months and there is nothing on the back stuff, I will simply consider it false. <sighs> By 16 August, I entered all locations from both the Dutch Wikipedia and the National Archives. Yet, I realized another problem. The Allies advanced through Germany into Helderland. But I had only researched the Allied advance in the Netherlands and not in any of its neighboring countries. In my With my current research, I could not show the Allied advance through Germany into Gelderland. So I had two choices. I could simply not show anything in Germany, or I would have to further research in other countries. And after thinking about it, I decided to do the latter. And so, I went on Google and searched information about the Allied conquest of specific German villages. I couldn't organize them into the Dutch Wikipedia article about the liberation of the Netherlands, so I instead I decided to add all the information to the NWiki articles about the Gauwe, the administrative divisions of Nazi Germany. And thus, on 16 August 2023, I edited the article How Waser Ems and added a section titled Allied Invasion and Occupation, where I listed data on the Allied Advance. 
for some entries, I will not only find sources from social media, which are not acceptable sources on Wikipedia, so I have citation need a template to those items in the hopes that reliable sources will eventually be found. And then I did the same for how Dusseldorf, how Essen, how Westphalia North, how Westphalia South, and how Cologne Ach. And also, I expanded the how card to be more text and stuff. You, you, you may wonder how I determined that a specific settlement is in a specific how. And the way I did this was by copying the map of the German how, putting it in the G, putting it in the QKS Geo referencer, and corroborating coordinate references until QKS produced a map from which I could then copy coordinates and insert the data points into Google My Maps, then draw a line with which I could separate the data points on the Allied advance into the appropriate cow. There was probably an easier way to sort these data points, but this is what I did. On 12th September 2023, I finished researching the Allied advance into Germany. The next stop was Belgium, which I began the next day. Here I will make things simpler, and instead of separating the data for every how, I will make just a, I will just make a page titled Chronology of the Liberation of Belgian Cities and Towns During World War II. As a sister page to Chronology of the Liberation of Dutch Towns and Cities During World War II, which is just the worst version of the Dutch language one. I finished researching the page on 18th September, and then two days later on the 20th, I created this little location map to decorate it more. And I will make other small improvements over the next piece every now and then. The research was now finally done. 1645 data points in total. The next task was to actually animate the video. So I took several screenshots of my My Maps project and combined them for greater detail. I then edited the composite map in Paint.net and got to work on my template. On 21 September, I finished drawing the eastern and southern borders of the Netherlands. However, afterwards, I went to the dentist to get a narcosis, during which four of my wisdom teeth were removed. And afterwards, I had a big swelling on my face. I was constantly bleeding, feeling weak, and also feeling pain from the swelling. I couldn't chew, I could only swallow liquids or very thin food. This went on for about 10 days until my cheek regenerated. Because I fell ill, I couldn't work on the video for a while, but I got back to it on 2 October. As I drew this Dutch coastline, I made sure to account for changes that had taken place since then, as the coast itself has moved in the past centuries. I found a map of Zealand in the 1920s, and after correcting that area, I drew the rest of the Dutch coast while making sure to exclude Flevoland. I also decided not to display small islets on which I did not have any data regarding the liberation. On the 6th, with my template done, I finally began animating the video on the liberation of the Netherlands. I slowly moved forward. I then considered how wild Operation Market Garden was, and considering how many small movements there were, maybe I shall research it in more detail. But that will be such a great time sink, and I felt I had already spent enough time researching. I had already done a great amount of research and I dive into every potential sink of resources, this will never be done. 
One lesson I've taken from my World War I project is that pursuing perfection just means that you will not have results. There's always more data in an archive somewhere. We should not strive to make perfect video maps, but video maps that are more accurate models than their predecessors. We have to imagine a man at a beach who complains that Google Maps and satellite imagery aren't precise enough. So, in his quest to make an absolutely perfect coastline map, he goes on to measure and note down every grain of sand on the coast of Britain. But, before he's even remotely done, the tides of the sea cause the coast to slightly recede or expand, rendering his meticulous efforts constantly outdated. This is the curse of the perfectionist video mapper. I worked two years on World War I, always new information somewhere on the web, until I threw up my hands and said, enough is enough. I ultimately decided to just kind of cross-reference my work on Tick's Battlestorm video on the subject and call it a day. Over the next weeks, I will slowly but surely move forward as I animated more and more of the liberation of the Netherlands. On 8 October, Dodo Lulu Pepe asked me to show the different sides of the Allies like the mapper does. I, of course, had already considered this and responded by saying, it will make this whole effort significantly harder. Though I will say that Dutch and Belgian home rule was restored in a matter of days from the Allies entering the countries, so if I did research that, you'd mostly only see it reflected in Germany. His conception about the liberation of the Netherlands is that the country was occupied by one or more foreign allied powers from 1944 to 1945 or 1946. You can even see this in Olibais, the history of Western Europe every year. But the reality is that after the allies entered the country on 12 September 1944, the Militaire Gezag was established two days later. This was a Dutch-led military administration with the officials appointed by the exiled Dutch Prime Minister, Peter Schurz Gebrandry. So, in contrast to Oli Bai's video and what my own viewers might expect, there was no Allied occupation of Dutch territory from 1944 to 1945. There was a very brief occupation of parts of Limburg lasting three days before home rule was re-established. This will render any effort to map the different occupation zones largely redundant outside of Germany, and Germany is not the focus of the video. On 24 October, I finished mapping the entirety of 1944. Although it had taken me weeks to map everything from September to December 1944, on 25 October, I could map two entire months, January and February 1945, in a single day, as the front was rather tranquil in this period. I had pushed to the end of March 1945 by 28 October 2023. However, I then ran into a new problem, Operation Armhest. During Operation Armhest, French paratroopers landed in 19 different locations in the Netherlands. Before I had got to this operation, I had already obtained a map of the locations where these paratroopers had landed. However, I also wanted to know which of these French paratroopers were defeated by Germany. In order to learn more, on 8 November I began watching this documentary by Frank Ehlerveld titled Operation Armhest. But the problem was that this video was two hours long and incredibly boring. I will advance 30 minutes in a day take notes and slowly make progress. I was storing my notes in a USB so that I could watch the documentary wherever I was. However, when I checked my USB on 12 November, I noticed that all the notes I had taken the prior day were gone. I had not realized it yet, but the cable in my PC was broken and failed to deliver enough energy for the USB ports to function. This would give me more problems later on. On 13 November, thinking back to the analogy of counting grains of sand at the beach, I decided to give up on making Arnhem as detailed as possible and moved on. Over the remainder of the week, I continued to work my way forward while animating. On 18 November, I reached 5 May 1945, 
the quote-unquote traditional end of the war, even though Germany was still occupying quite a bit of territory. On 19 November, I reached 11 June 1945, when the German forces on the island of Schiermonnikau surrendered, marking the completion of the liberation of the Netherlands. However, even though I had pushed to 11 June 1945, I knew that I neglected to map the Georgian uprising in Texel. In my rush to reach 11 June 1945, I had delegated the side conflict to my future self. And thus, on 20 November 2023, I began researching the Georgian uprising on Texel. On the Dutch Wikipedia, there is a map of how the initial uprising advanced. At first I felt relieved and thought my job had already been done for me. However, when I tried to apply the map to my, onto my own, I noticed that the island's borders were larger than the ones on my own map. I presume the island shrunk because of rising sea levels due to climate change. With that in mind, I went through the effort of redrawing Texel. But then, I realized that if the borders of Texel had changed, what about other islands? So I got some old maps, painstakingly marked the coordinates so that I could redraw them precisely, and slowly but surely fixed all the islands, finishing on 5 December. When that was done, it was time for me to map the Georgian uprising on Texel. The map only goes up to 9 April 1945, but the uprising lasted until 20 May. So I wanted to find events beyond 9 April. To find more information, I looked at the source field on the Dutch Wikipedia map, where I read that it was sourced from a book called Koninkrijk der Nederlanden in the Tweede Wereldoorlog by Lou de Jong. In this book, I read that there was a German offensive that lasted from 22 to 25 April and made significant gains. How far did it exactly go and what parts did the Georgians continue to fight over? The book didn't say. Maybe if I bought a book specifically about the Georgian uprising in Texel, I will learn more. This is getting into the same issue with Operation Armhest. Perfectionism comes at the cost of actually delivering results. So I decided they were stuck on the southwest and left it at that. As long as my video is the best, minor inaccuracies like this are more economical to overlook. Accuracy in mapping is incremental, not absolute. While reading the aforementioned book, Koninkrijk der Nederlanden in the Tweede Wereldoorlog, I also stumbled upon the timeline of events in the Netherlands from July 1944 to 1945. This was excellent. I've often heard the criticism that mapping videos like these don't actually teach you what is happening because it's just moving colors. So text like this could work to amend that. On 6 December 2023, I created a Wikipedia user page. User Coopinator slash timeline of the Netherlands during World War II. Creating it in user space allowed me to work on it outside of the public eye until it's finished. Because the book by Lou de Jong was released under a Creative Commons license, I could just legally copy it directly onto Wikipedia. Of course, because I will be copying text onto the English Wikipedia, I had to translate the Dutch text. I used ChatGPT to translate and clean up the text, and then I copied the text over the next few days, finishing on the 9th and moving it onto main space. That marks the second Wikipedia article I created specifically for this project. It is still very lacking in 1939 to 1943, but you know, Wikipedia is a work in progress. On 10 December, I started getting more anxious about the fact that the end of the year was nearing. I hated the thought of going through all of 2023 without finishing a single mapping video. I will have no big achievements in this year to look back on. Therefore, I made a point to finish this project before the end of the year. Afterwards, I had to add the text about the events onto my video, but there was no way I could fit all those events into my video's info box. Not to mention that it will be too cumbersome to read all at once. So I decided to pick what events were important enough to note in the info box, which involves a bit of subjective judgment. After a few days of experimenting with what worked the best, I finally came out with a satisfactory events list for my video on 14 December 2023.
On 15 December, I began the process of adding city labels to my video. There was the question of which cities I should add. The simple solution will be to add the top 10 or top 20 most populated cities, but I felt that would create too much clutter in the Western Netherlands. So what I decided on was this very unscientific process that I just went through to get things done. There is this Wikipedia page titled Provinces of the Netherlands. It contains the capital and largest municipality of every province. I decided to add all of those. I then did the same for Belgium. Then I zoomed out on Google My Maps and added all the German cities that appeared the largest. Because I figured those will be bigger and thus more important. I then added every single settlement which I mentioned in the video's events timeline to add context including the small village of Mechelen, which is mentioned because it's the first Dutch settlement north of the Rhine to be liberated. Harderen and Aachen were added because they were encircled, and this will make it easier for readers to discern what cities were encircled. Some of that might sound arbitrary, but it gets things done. When I had decided what cities I wanted to display, I went on paint.net and drew circles and labels over all of them, before I then created an overlay and used batch photo to patch off frames of the city labels. Everything about the video itself was now done. I had finished the research, the animation, and the city labels. If I wanted to, I could have uploaded the video on 15 December 2023. However, there was one last issue which I had yet to address. Sources. The simple solution, of course, will have been to simply upload it without sources, as sources will be listed here at some point, and just leave it like that for months until I forget about it. However, I am a man who cites his sources, and has his sources ready the moment he uploads. But there was one problem. Normally, when I create a mapping video, I make a list of all the sources I used and call it a day. However, while something like the 1929 Afghan Civil War can be researched with a single book and maybe some supplementary material here and there, researching the liberation of the Netherlands from 1944 to 1945 was more complicated than that. I had to make many Google searches, create multiple lists of data, visited the National Archives, and had to judge what material was or was not accurate. Furthermore, for those who had seen my video announcing my retirement, I wanted to explain what I have been up to for the past one and a half years. In order to fully explain the nuances in my research and my absence, I decided to make a fully scripted video explaining the process of making the video about the liberation of the Netherlands, serving as a source appendix and afterwards. And thus, on 16 December, I began writing a wrong script. On the 17th, my brother-in-law came to get my computer. My USB had ceased functioning for a while, so he had to take the computer to my sister's home. She tinkered with my computer a bit to try and fix it, but she inadvertently ended up preventing me from accessing my D drive, so I no longer had the files to compile and upload my mapping video. I can already hear the boys in the comments saying, yeah, of course girls are dumb, but I don't really see that way. I, I have been told I was on the verge of ceasing to function anyway. This meant I would have to wait until my computer functioned again before I can, could upload the mapping video, because... The entire mapping video I was stored on my D drive and now I can no longer access it. A new cable to make it work again will arrive on Thursday the 21st. However, because I had stored the script for my appendix online, I could continue to work on it. And I will write on it on and off over the next days before mostly finishing the script on 19 December. Although a few more tweaks will be made while I will gather illustrations for Windows Movie Maker and voice the video. The next day, the 20th, I gathered most of the necessary illustrations, except the ones I will need to access my D drive to get my hands on, 
which I replace with these dummy images, which are references to fairly odd parents meme. In order to illustrate myself writing this script, I recorded myself pressing backspace and used an online tool to reverse it to give the impression of text being created. Although I finished writing most of the script on the 19th, on the 20th I would go back on my script and describe how I added the illustrations and describe myself, describing myself, describing myself, describing myself, describing myself. On 21 December I recorded myself reading my own script using Microsoft's built-in video recorder, which unfortunately reduced the quality of my sound a bit. About 10 minutes into the recording, I got bored, so I started screaming and clapping and laughing more. On 22 December, I recovered my D-Drive and recorded myself using Windows Live Movie Maker, resulting in better sound. And I also finished recording most of my scripts, save a few more edits I will make while editing. On 23 December, I began creating the behind-the-scenes video in Windows Movie Maker. However, after creating 2 minutes and 12 seconds of footage, I started running into issues when trying to edit out all the times I misspoke. I then switched to editing in HitFilm Studio. On 24 December, I finished editing the behind the scenes video.